Okay, in part one I had the uh, focus a little different. I had the uh, the zoom out mode set, and I, we could see the background pretty good, but the foreground was pretty blurry. So I switched it around for this one. Uh, do a little more close-up work. Uh, besides, a lot of you guys will find nodes shaped similar to this, which are on the small side. Again, I'll, I'll reduce this in a level wa technique. And uh, I think this is how you spell it. L e v a l l o i s. Uh, it's a Neanderthal technique. Uh, you can also probably Google Google uh, lithic reduction. Anyway, I'm going to take my hammer stone and uh, reduce this down until I get. A, uh, a blade shape at the very end. I'm just looking for opportunistic flakes right now to, to start with. I, I took a flake off so I could see the interior. And that was some time ago. It's got some patina on it now. Let's see how this works. This is a raw chert. All of this in the background is raw. Very good flake. The uh, stone near the cortex is usually very good quality. As you get further in, a lot of these nodes will have very tough concrete interiors. Uh, you can still use that flake for a hand axe. The I mean, not the flake, but the uh, the preform at the very end. If it's concrete, you can still use it for a hand axe or some other woodworking application. You may end up with something that looks like this that's very very tough will not send flakes very well across but you can still use this as a tool whereas if you had a uh, what I call a, I guess a traditional type of uh, core you end up with a little fat thing like uh, I don't know um, I'm sure you've all seen it I don't have one in here but it looks like a like a cone shape object with blades taken off the sides. I normally don't spall that way or create cores in that way. Okay. I'm just hitting kind of into the stone not too hard, this is not a very big stone. Brushing almost. I'm trying to uh, get past that bit of concrete. I noticed it when I first hit it. There's a bit of concrete in here, what we call concrete. It'll stop the flakes from traveling. It's very tough. pretty good I can probably follow this ridge here it's kind of a tight spot I might be able to do it well, I'm off to the side a little bit but I still got a good blade because of the ridge here now you can see this is this is what I mean by concrete a little bit harder to net, but this one doesn't look too bad. It went the full length. Very nice for a blade. I'm going to get rid of that now so it's not sticking out there. Just gently tapping it. It doesn't take very much to get rid of some of this. I mean, to send some flick, small flakes, it doesn't take very much uh, force to remove those, so you're not really tapping this hard, you're tapping it gently. And the crushing going on is strengthening the edge. This, the thing that you dread when you're flint napping, the uh, crushed edge is something you actually want when you're spalling like this. You know how difficult it is to 
to get past a crushed edge. Well, you're going to use that difficulty to strengthen the edge. Okay. So I'm just going to go over, try to go around the whole thing. Drive a flake this way. By hitting right about there, I guess. I'm going to move over a little bit. Not quite stopped right here on this mass. I could probably hit this. Now that I look at it, I can probably hit this and take this mass off here. Now that that strike was a was into the stone, but almost like a brushing flake. I carried through. I didn't stop right here. I carried through the that strike. Same thing on a large on a large core. You want to carry it through a little bit. If you stop, the uh, the fracture is actually going to go this way and not that way. You want to make sure that you are, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but when you carry through like that, the angles are slightly different. The angle of impact is slightly different. The forces are slightly different. And the, the uh, tensile strength will, will break in here. The crack will travel more in that direction instead of going up like this. If you hit straight in, the angle from the from straight in where it's going to start to initiate the crack is going to go in this direction. And I believe it's going to be let's say if the tip of the pen was zero up here. That angle that it's the crack will initiate is 130 degrees. From if this if this is the direct line of impact. crack will initiate at 130 degrees. So you don't want it going that way. You want that line of impact to go down slightly. Almost like a brushing flake. And that fracture will initiate there and go into the stone. crushing because it's the platform is not strong enough from what I want to do so let's move over I can probably hit this and remove some of this mass I'm following through and I miss a little bit I'm off to the right a little bit but it's still it still took off a pretty good flake I can use that We are going to end up with a saucer shape at the end. There's another flake under here. Let's see if we can get that out. Actually, that one's pretty good. So we got two off of that. Off of that one strike. That first flake came off of here, and then there was one that was not fully detached. This is not bad, but it's got a crack in the middle, so I'll have to. Uh, I wanted to use this. I can use these two pieces. Okay, so we we can see some cracks in the stone. Now we did that with the hammer stone, but. Around the cortex, you, sometimes you find cracks. This is not bad. I don't see very many. So we could probably use this whole thing. some cracks in there that'll give us trouble if we try to use that area but uh, in general it's it's a pretty good piece 
I like these clunky pieces here. They're easier for me to work with than the really thin blades. And we're almost done reducing this down to a preform. a nice flake for a bird point. That one is too. Alright, so we'll stop there because this stone is a little bit large for reducing this to a blade. I'd want to go down to one of my smaller hammer stones to continue with this, so we'll just stop. Um, I'll get one more piece here. Do this quickly. In this case, the interior of the stone is actually very good quality. So you get all types. This will make a nice arrowhead. It's got different, different uh, colors in it. Another nice blade that can be used as is. It's a scraper. This has some nice color variations. I can make a bird point out of this. If I wanted to reduce this down into a preform, I just trim off the delicate parts. Get rid of this. Sometimes you can knock off the thick spots like this. And this is basically a preform right there. I'd make a bird point out of it. As you can see, I'm pretty casual. I just drop the stone down in here, but this is all raw stone. When it's loose like this, you drop something in there, you're not going to break too much. But uh, you get the idea. After I reduce this down some more, I can still use the uh, core itself as a uh, preform for a tool of some sort.